Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Friday preview for Cheltenham, fourth and final day. Um, uh, before we get to the weekend's action at Kempton and Utoxia, which looks like being quite good, actually. Looks like we're going to get some good cards. Excuse me, I still have tea. Um, we're halfway through the week. I'm doing this at 9.38 on Thursday morning. So, effectively, we've had two days racing so far. First day was pretty good for me, vintage clouds and all that. Second day, not so good. Just a couple of places, really, to, to speak of. But I was really pleased with the effort of On the Slopes in the Grand Annual. Um, a much more positive ride. Fired into his fences a bit more. And at the same time, keeping a bit back. I was That was much more encouraging and showed that he still got it at this level. I think there's, there's a decent handicap to be won with On the Slopes before the, uh, before the season's out. Keep him in mind. Um, right, we'll, um, we'll rattle through Fridays then. 120, kick off with a triumph hurdle. One of my better anti post bets of the week again here with Tritonic. Um, I'm on it. To, I'm on at ten, and then I've got a little bit more at six. So he's now a five to two chance. Now you can argue on form that there's very little between Zan here, Tritonic, and Quixelos as it stands, and that Quixelos therefore should be the bet at four to one. But listen, I'm, I'm really keen on Tritonic's chance to see. I think the fact that the ground's quickening up a little bit is in his favour, and possibly a little bit against. Zana here um, and and Quixilos who've been sort of playing their trade on, on slower ground we know that Tritonic goes on quicker ground we saw him win at Kempton really well in the end I know he was off the bridle turning in just for a few strides but once he was back on it again he was only ever one winner and the way that he put Cataloupe away by 10 times the distance that he had done on soft ground at, at Ascot um, I thought that was really smart he's got, he's got a nice mix for an Alan King horse of stamina and speed Normally they're all speed horses, these Alan King ones, but this one's got a bit of both. And you saw that at Ascot actually on his debut because he had to dig really deep to go and pick Casalupi up. Um, I like him. I really like him. And I'll be um, I'll be disappointed if, if he's not there at the last. Um, fingers crossed that he can he can do the base. Only eight runners, by the way, for the triumph. You don't want a non-runner in this at a late stage. And I do wonder whether Adagio might be, you know, on this ground. I don't know. They were looking for a bit more rain, I think. So you might not even get each way each way a pleasure tomorrow. We'll see. Um, the county, like many, I was very taken with Ganapathy's run at the Dublin Racing Festival, where he travelled really, really well in behind um, um, Gayard de Manil, uh, but didn't see the the two six out on on heavy ground, and you immediately sort of thought, oh, you know. County hurdle sort, you can travel on the bridle, faster they go the better, etc. etc. His chance is there, but the price now six to one. If you're not on and I'm not, I didn't I haven't batted him anti post. And if because there was worries of him going elsewhere, so I haven't batted him anti post. And if you're not on uh, do I want to back him at six, given his inexperience, that, I suppose that's the concern now. Um I don't think I do. I if he wins he wins and I can sort of kick, give myself a kick in for not backing him earlier. Um, the one that I'm sort of leaning towards, listen, um, the likes of 50 ball, obvious enough. Um, I think he's got every chance um, towards the top of the handicap. I'd have liked to have seen some rain for Edward Stone. I think he's nicely handicapped off 148, but I think some rain would have helped his cause. I'm sort of leaning now. I looked at the, the pace again last night. I was looking at the pace of the rain. And we, we'd, we'd seen, we've already seen yesterday, um, Heaven Help us may call in the Coral Cup, get an easy lead out. Ping, 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 and gone, and they're just going to get to him. Now, I'm not saying for a minute that's what Petit Mouche was going to do tomorrow, that they're going to have him out in front and pinging away, but I think he'll be up there from the word go. I think the ground's fine for him. I don't think he'll mind drying ground. It's okay. You look at some of his efforts on good and good to yield in um, over the past couple of years, and they've been absolutely fine. Um, and the, with the promise of just a drop of rain to come, you know, and a and a, a due tomorrow morning, it might just keep enough moisture in the ground for him. Um, he doesn't. He obviously races in graded company and and top graded company for much of the time. Petit Mouchoir. but when you look at you know the the fact that he was in the um, he, he took part in the the at Galway in the Guinness Hurdle last year, the Galway Hurdle, and off this mark off one fifty five with a seven pound claimer on his back was very was a very close third, and that was ultra competitive. So is this. So he's off the same mark one fifty five. John Gainsford, you know, he might not have given Chosen Mate the greatest ride, but he had a look round. So he knows the track a little bit now. And I think 
Petit Mouchoir looks like one of the main pace angles in a race where there's not that much pace. You have a look through this. How many of these are going to want to lead? Three, four of them maybe? Not many. So it could be that something slips off the front here. I, I think Petit Mouchoir, in a race where we've seen, we've seen top weights do, you know, classy top weights do well in this before. He's now looking overpriced to me, 33s. I think he's worth a swing with the extra places. Um, I, he's growing on me as, a, as an outsider. Yeah. Um, and he'll do for me. Albert Bartlett, surely, surely. I mean, if you if there's a level weights race this week that's going to be won by a rag, this is it, isn't it? I don't think there's a standout performer in here. The the best of the Irish uh, looked to be the probably Statler and Fakira, but you know, not it's not standout form by any means. Um, I think I'd rather I'd rather have two small goes in the race. Um, First one being three under three five, who won't mind the ground. He's won a couple of little races at Ludlow and Musselburgh, but he's won them well. And the horses that finished behind him have come out one little races since, so he looks all right. He needs to step up again, but he doesn't need to step up that much. And he's still a double figure price. Um, I like the way that he, he stuck to it at Musselburgh. Um, he looked he looked a stayer that day, a proper stayer that day. And as I say, with drawing ground in his favour, I can see three under three five going well. And I'm not going to be able. I shouldn't really. But at, at what's likely to be a three-figure price, I think the ground's too quick to beat the bullet. But I was at Haydock when he ran against Alaphilippe, and he he was very unfit that day after a, after a break. He badly needed that, and I thought he'd be falling out the back from halfway. And he actually ran all right. He he was sort of still there, the three out. Then he got hampered, and then it was sort of game over for him at that point. And he was allowed to come home in his own time. He got beat about thirty lengths. I think he wants softer ground. And I think whatever he does, here we go, cliche bingo, whatever he does over hurdles he is a bonus because he's a chaser through and through this horse. When he goes novice chasing next year, and I'm sure he will, that's when you want to be with him. Get him in your trackers for next year, beat the bullet. Uh, I won't resist a swing. I think the ground's, I think the ground might be too quick. He did win a point-to-point -point on good ground, but, pff, you know, point-to-point. -point. So my worry is he'll, he'll just find it all happening a bit quick. But in a race that something could pop up in, you could do worse than beat the bullet at three figures and you'll probably get four places on the race as well so the gold cup i've talked about till i'm blue in the face i don't really want to sort of go over it again i i still think album photo is the likeliest winner simply because he's blotted his copybook the least this season um on saying that after yesterday you know the champ form now looks a bit stronger because i think so royale was was desperately unlucky not to hit the frame at worst in the in the champion chase Got absolutely carved up up the inside as as Town then moved over on Shacken. He was just race riding. I watched it back again last night. Initially, I thought that looked really bad, but actually, he was just sort of keeping a straight line where that where the rail comes in. So, um, you know, it's just a bit of race riding. It caused a bit of a collision, but it did not have cost so Royal some ground. And I can't help but think he'd have been in the frame at worst with a clear run but still that's that's by the by but it makes the champ form look a bit better i've heard it said a couple of times his, his stamina is proven for this that's nonsense his stamina isn't proven for this his stamina for three miles is proven his stamina for three mile two and a half is not proven so you can't say it's proven can you say you will probably get it yes you can is it proven no it isn't there's a there's a difference between it's a thin line but there's a difference between the two so it isn't proven but i do think now that that form looks a bit better than than, than it did at the time um, and I, I'm warming to champ a bit more than perhaps I was. Um, of the of the outsiders, I you know it's a shame it's it, the, the weather's gone the way it has for Native River because obviously soft ground would have been right in his favour. I can't have up a guy with bad money. I'll be laying him for a place. I just he's won three handicaps from you know Espada, Rame, Potter's Legend, Kaplan, or no, they get lapped in this. So. Uh, you know, he, he's got different ground conditions to face. He's stepping right up. I understand why they're having a go in a weak year, but I, uh, he's, he's now looking like place lane material to me with the ground going against him. Santini, no thanks. Manella Indo, too many mistakes. Lost in translation, looks a shadow of the horse he once was. And so on and so on. The, I suppose you can you can argue the possibility that Frodon might get his, his own way out in front, but again, he's got... He's got to really show that, you know, three, two and a half round is, is what he wants and he might get pestered up front as well if they do go on with Native River and possibly a couple of possibly a couple of others. Um, I suppose it, it's got to be an album photo, but I'm not, as I say, it's not really a batting contest for me, the Gold Cup. One to watch and cheer him home.
Similarly, the Fox Hunters, it will be nothing more than uh, a heart bet, as it were, because I'm on Law of Gold, who is who has got his ground. You know, he, he wants good ground, Law of Gold. Um, there is a, there's a story I tell. I was working at Garthorpe with um, with uh, Darren Wentworth um, about two years ago now. I think it'd be two or three years ago. And we got, it was, I think it was just a maiden, and we got 10 to 1 Laura Gold on the board. And they're all down at the post. We, we were all sort of pouring ourselves a cup of tea because everybody had gone to watch. And this, the, the bloke comes up with some tack in his hand, and he just says, um, he looks at, the, looks at our board, and he goes, Laura Gold, he says, hmm, 10 to 1. How much can I have on that? Now, when somebody says the words, how much can I have on that to you, at a point to point, you know you're on, you know it's a bit of a trier. And uh, I think Laura Gold got beat about a, a length or a head something that day. I can't remember exactly, but he finished second. Uh, and he backed it each way with us. Uh, he backed it each way. So he came to draw his place when he, and, he, and they were basically sort of saying that they did not had a run. They were due to have a gallop at Wolverhampton. But I think the equine flu was about at the time. So they cancelled all the gallops. And he said, if it had that gallop, he says, I think he'd have won. And look what he's gone on to do since. He's proven himself really good. Seventh in the race last year too. It came to pass. Um, I think he'll do a little bit better this year. Um, that run against Hillsong at Doncaster was a good one. He just got tired late. So that was his first one since the Fox Hunters. They've come on plenty for that. It's it's a I say it's a bet simply because I was you know I've seen the horse and they obviously they, they think a bit of him. He's thirty threes. It, it'll be a, a fun bet. No such thing as a fun bet. They say it will be though. That will be a a fun bet and I can uh, and hopefully cheer him on. Um, Mayor's Chase no interest. Don't care. Um, the market's got it right. I think, but. There's there's nothing in here I particularly want to to get involved with from a, a, a betting perspective to be honest. Um, I wish them well with really super the white diamond lot. Um, they've got a chance of, they've got a chance of nicking a place in in a, a an event that is winnable. The ground coming in his favour as well, but I I don't I don't want to have a bet. I've not got, I've not got any great interest. Um, and then we wrap up. We wrap up with the Martin Parrop. I'd, I'd normally be in the car on the way home at this point. I'd have been going to Cheltenham, but um, halfway up the M5. But I should be watching it on the TV. Um, I don't know, again, at this stage, I've not really, I'll, I'll be entirely honest, I've not looked properly at the race. I did get word from from sources about a month ago that Gentleman de May would be heading this way and that he was... A banker, I was told, for the for the money genre. There's no such thing as a banker at Cheltenham as well, you know, particularly in a in a, in a twenty what twenty six run a twenty four run a race. So, um, but obviously that's that's got to be taken in consideration that they, they clearly we're heading this way with him. Um, I've not really looked at the race much. The one I sort of um, that sort of stumped on a little bit was the the Ben Pauling horse. What's up with you? Um, who ran all right here against Captain Tom Cat? in October and then came out and finished second stimulating song over the same course and distance. He lacked on the ground. Luca Morgan knows the horse well. Um, it wasn't a bad run against Monte Cristo either at Kempton last time and I think this track will suit him better. Um, ben Pauling's were a little bit out of form at Christmas as well. They're in better form now. Again, 40 to 1, nothing more than a small each way swing really in a race where you can make cases for plenty. So there we go. Um, the very best of luck with all your bets today and tomorrow I will do another video for Saturday when I've looked at your Toxtis card decks will be out shortly and uh, Kempton's as well. All the fun of the fair. Have a good one.